In collaboration with BrainMind, let's discuss an overview of Alzheimer's prevention and treatment strategies. Unfortunately, there is no one magic pill or magic potion that we know of that we can prevent or cure Alzheimer's disease at this time. However, the combination of evidence-based multimodal strategies in a very clinically individualized way gives us our best chance for success. So let's review. What do we mean by a targeted, individualized Alzheimer's prevention and treatment plan? To start, we talk about two different categories. Let's think about pharmacologic strategies, and then let's talk about non-pharmacologic strategies in those two categories. Pharmacologic strategies, to me, includes drugs, vitamins, and supplements. There's also another category called medical foods, which we won't talk about, but is interesting, and we're learning more about every day. A medical food is intended for the clinical dietary management of a specific aspect of cognitive decline. When it comes to drugs, drugs are ubiquitous. We know what drugs are. We can use drugs for high blood pressure, drugs for diabetes, drugs for dementia treatment, as well as drugs for hundreds, and if not thousands of other medical conditions. While there is no, again, FDA approved drug to prevent or cure Alzheimer's disease, there are FDA approved drugs on the market now throughout the world that can at least attenuate some of the symptoms related to Alzheimer's disease dementia. But there are other drugs that are on the market that we use in a form called an off-label form. Off-label means that there may be benefits to using these drugs related to specific Alzheimer's disease risk factors. And we can use these drugs to attenuate or reduce Alzheimer's disease risk, or we can use these drugs to manage some of the symptoms related to Alzheimer's disease dementia. For example, people with Alzheimer's dementia may have problems sleeping. They may have anxiety or depression. Well, we may be able to use antidepressant medications or medications that may improve sleep to mitigate some of these negative effects of the disease. When it comes to vitamins and supplements, this is a very complicated area. In brief, vitamins are specific nutrients that your body needs to survive. Most of these vitamins should be gotten from food. However, research has shown that in specific people, in certain circumstances, based on the person's, again, individual biology, certain vitamins may need to be used in higher levels and in specific forms in order to protect brain health over time. Now, supplements. What is a supplement? They go by many names. Supplements, nutraceuticals, dietary supplements. There are hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of different supplements out there used across a variety of different conditions. However, they're used and they're intended for normal, healthy individuals. The key here is that a physician cannot necessarily prescribe a supplement, and supplements are available over the counter and may or may not have some sort of biological impact on a disease, but they are not specifically used for the treatment or cure of any condition. We use supplements in the individualization of management in specific cases to give a person the best chance at optimal brain health and also to reduce specific risk factors that we identify during a clinical workup. When it comes to non-drug or non-pharmacological approaches, the list goes on and on. Let's talk about physical exercise and the differences between physical inactivity or a sedentary lifestyle, physical activity, meaning someone that moves around enough, but the final most important phase of physical activity is physical exercise and understanding how we can use physical activity and physical exercise specifically and the different types in order to promote brain health, slow brain aging, and even reverse some of the potential negative effects of Alzheimer's disease dementia is something that we can't talk enough about and we'll talk more about soon. Physical exercise, for example, is really the only thing that we know of today that anyone can use to definitively attenuate or reduce the collection or accumulation of amyloid in the brain. When it comes to nutrition, there are so many different individual nutritional interventions in order to help protect brain health. 
The two general categories of nutrition that we'll talk more about include dietary patterns, for example, a Mediterranean-style diet or a ketogenic diet, and then single or multiple nutrients, for example, omega-3 fatty acids that are contained in food, which are brain-healthy fats, omega-6 fatty acids, vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin B12, that you get from food rather than in the pharmacological approach of through a vitamin or supplement. So nutritional approaches are key, and it's not just all about what you eat, how you eat it is also very important. Time-restricted eating, intermittent fasting are concepts we'll talk about soon. The other non-pharmacological approaches that can be implemented in terms of a prevention or treatment plan include cognitive engagement, cognitive stimulation, brain training. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's absolutely the case when it comes to Alzheimer's disease and memory loss. Further, keeping the brain engaged, learning something new, a musical instrument, learning a new language. These are things that build up backup pathways. These are the types of interventions that we can capitalize on when we're using a multimodal individualized cognitive health plan. Further, music activities, whether it's a specific music therapy intervention with a board certified music therapist for a person with dementia due to Alzheimer's, or whether it's learning how to play a musical instrument in effort to try to protect the brain and build up a cognitive backup system. These are all different areas that music can impact the brain and be implicated for both Alzheimer's prevention and treatment. Stress reduction, imperative. Stress fast forwards brain aging. Stress leads to inflammation. It leads to increased cortisol levels, which is our stress hormone. There are a variety of different ways to reduce stress that have been studied for cognitive and brain health, from transcendental meditation to mindfulness-based stress reduction. We'll talk about all these in more detail. In addition, sleep. We can't talk enough about sleep. The different stages of sleep all contribute differently to a person's Alzheimer's risk. The total amount of sleep all contributes in a very specific way to Alzheimer's risk. Sleep hygiene is something that is absolutely crucial, staying on a regular pattern. These are all things that will either fast forward or slam the brakes on cognitive decline. And then finally, when it comes to the gestalt management of both Alzheimer's treatment and prevention, managing medical risk factors, managing vascular risk factors, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking, obesity, the list goes on and on, are absolutely critical to protecting brain health. Also, a newer risk factor that's been identified for cognitive decline is hearing loss. When someone can't hear and can't stay engaged in a conversation or even stay engaged in life, that will actually continue to not just affect memory consolidation, but can actually lead to faster cognitive decline. Also, loneliness, losing a sense of purpose in life are very important and I would say critical psychosocial elements to protecting the brain from both the initiation or start of Alzheimer's disease pathology, as well as to slow how fast Alzheimer's disease fast forwards. So to summarize, there is no one magic pill for Alzheimer's treatment or prevention, but the combination of safe, evidence-based, multi-domain interventions that are individualized for that person at risk will give us our best chance of success.